Hey there, Rye the Car Guy here, and today we are going to throw a new lower control arm on the Titan. This was going to be a ball joint video where you basically pop out the old ball joint and the old bushings and then put in new ones, but I saw how rusty the lower control arm was and I figured, hey, why not just uh, completely replace it? So that's what we're going to do today. I went with Moog, so we went aftermarket. Uh, I think they're personally a good balance between quality and value, so I'll definitely put a link down below in the description if you want to pick up the part that I used. I already lifted the Titan, I just used the front cross member, lifted it there, of course put two jack stands on either side, and then lowered it back down onto the jack stands. So there's a lot connected to the lower control arm, so uh, it's going to be a lot of disassembly, so let's just get straight to it. Take the tire off of course to start, and then uh, we'll start taking everything off that we need to remove. To remove this lower control arm, we have to remove uh, a few things. We need to remove the lower mount bolt of our shock. We have to remove our sway bar link, which of course uh, connects to the lower control arm. And then we have to take out the axle. If you have four wheel drive, you need to pull the axle out. And then uh, of course you need to separate the lower ball joint and take out the two bolts in the back that uh, connect it to of course the frame. So let's start with the lower shock bolt. I already did this. I just went ahead and put a wrench on one side and then threw my impact on the other. And that of course makes it pop right out. Now that that is out, let's take the lower link off from the sway bar link. For that, just take your 19 millimeter wrench, throw it on the back side here, and then 17 on the front. And I'm just gonna use an impact to pull that off. It may still hold on for a little bit. You can just leave this in place because once we lower the lower control arm, it'll just kind of guide itself out or you can just kind of flip it back once we start to lower it. Next up, we're gonna take off our axle nut and I already pulled off the split pin because mine is actually broken. Um, but normally you'd have, of course, the pin come in and then wrap around. You just gotta pull it off with some needle nose pliers and then grab uh, a giant socket. In this case, it's actually 32 millimeter. And then I'm gonna grab my impact and we're gonna slap it on here and pull this thing off. All right. Clearly I had that off recently, came off nice and easy. And then our axle is uh, already free. Sometimes you have to give this a little uh, wallop with a dead blow to kind of break it loose if it's been sitting in there for too long. But uh, this one's nice and loose. I already have it greased up from when I did the hubs recently. Now that that's freed up, theoretically you should be able to pull the whole assembly to one side and push the axle out. I've done it before. I did it when I was um, replacing these hubs, but honestly, it's such a huge pain. You have to manhandle it so hard to get it out. I'm actually just gonna release our tie rod end. And so just pull that out, pop it off. And that way, not only does it clear up this whole area, but you're able to freely turn this back and forth as much as you want without having to worry about turning the other wheel. So for that, we just grab our pliers and remove our split pin. Not sure if this one's gonna survive. Doesn't look too good. This guy is a big old 22. So we just wanna break that loose. There we go. And once that's loose, I'm just gonna use my uh, impact to back it off the rest of the way. Just ignore the fact that I'm not using an impact socket on my impact. I already broke it loose, so cut me a little slack. There we go. Now I'm just gonna give this a little love tap to drop it loose. There we go. And now that's out of the way. So as you can see, we have all this space now. We can just kind of flip this back and forth and hopefully have enough room to remove our axle. So I can already tell you it's gonna be easier to take this axle out if we uh, drop the, the upper ball joint, which I literally just put this in earlier. I haven't even driven it, so it hasn't been tightened down. But if you do need to take it off, it's a 22 millimeter, just like your, your tie rod end. And then you can pop it off um, with a ball joint separator or you know pickle fork if you're replacing it. But uh, just back that off, and then of course support the bottom with a jack, so that way uh, you know all the weights on that as opposed to on your control arm. So I'm going to pop this off. Excellent. And so now you'll see it pivots away, 
and that should help us get the axle out. As you're doing this, be extra careful that you're not uh, putting any tension on your uh, speed sensor or of course your brake lines. So now we're just gonna turn this one direction and be able to pull it out, hopefully. There we go. So once we're to this point, we actually just need to, uh, I'm gonna loosen the actual bolts, the frame bolts that go from the lower control arm to the frame. Just get those out and ready while everything's still sort of here. And then we're just gonna separate this lower ball joint. In the meantime, if you wanted to, you could slide this upper ball joint back in and just get the, uh, get the nut back on there just so it holds it in place. Now these bolts should not be too terribly difficult. Uh, on one side it is 22 millimeters and I'm just gonna get a breaker bar on that. And the other side is 19 and I'm just gonna use my impact on that. And again, the goal right now is just to take these nuts and loosen them. Either take them all the way off, it doesn't really matter, they're not gonna fall out. So I'll just take the nuts completely off on both sides and I'm gonna use the same method on both sides. Excellent. Now we're starting to get a real tight squeeze in here. You know, theoretically you could go on the other side of this axle right here and pop off the, uh, the bolts down there and remove that whole axle to get it out of the way. Um, but that's a bit extreme. I don't really think you need to do that. What I'm gonna do instead is just grab a bungee cord and pull it up as far as I can and just uh, you know kind of tuck it out of the way. So I'll do that and then we're gonna separate our ball joint. So as you can see, our lower control arm actually has the ball joint facing down and going into the knuckle and then it sort of pinches it using this bolt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that the bottom is supported here. We're gonna take the bolt out first, but make sure the bottom's supported on the knuckle before we start basically getting our pickle fork in here and hammering the crap out of this because we don't want all of the pressure being on our upper control arm. So let's pop this bolt off first and then we'll wedge something in there, kind of open it up a little bit to pop this ball joint out. So again, this side here, the, the bolt side is 17 and the nut side is 19. So again, I'm just gonna grab the impact for the bolt side, put a, a breaker bar on the nut side so it doesn't spin, and then we're just gonna back this out. Ooh, that thing is complaining. Oh, I have it on the wrong setting. That's probably why. You probably can't see that, but I got my impact back out and the, uh, the nut was actually smoking. Uh, that was wild. It is so freakishly hot that it is smoking. So now we have our jack supporting this weight. So when we get in here and we go crazy on the pickle fork, again, we're not gonna be messing up our upper link or putting any undue stress up there. For now, I'm also leaving the bolts, the mount bolts in the rear against the frame. So that way when we're ready to go, you know, it stays all aligned and then we can just come in and uh, pull those out in a controlled manner. So for this, as you can see, we have this little seam here. So I'm going to get my biggest chisel that I have and I'm gonna hammer it in. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna lightly spread these two, uh, you know, kind of pinchers here. I don't know what the hell they're called, but it's gonna spread that apart and allow us to make it at least a little bit easier to pull this ball joint out. There we go. And now get our pickle fork in there. See if we can manipulate this. There we go. There we go, perfect. And we're pushing our grease out, that's to be expected. There we go, awesome. So now that that's loose there, pull that little wedge out and our lower ball joint is out. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I'm shocked it was that easy. With this out and cleaned up, you can kind of see what the idea is here. This uh, pinches around the lower ball joint and this groove here is uh, designed where when you slide this bolt in, it slides into that groove. So there's no way that that lower ball joint is coming out. I like to replace these bolts only because of um, just the intense amount of 
pressure you have to put on them to remove them. So, uh, I mean, you don't necessarily have to, but I ordered one uh, just, to, just to get a new one in here. All right, with that, uh, with that removed, it's kind of our, our time to shine here. It's the big moment. We're gonna remove our lower control arm. So I'm gonna remove, uh, I just put these nuts back on just so things don't slide around. But we're gonna remove those rear bolts. There's one. And be prepared for it to fall once you take these out. There we go. I'm just gonna get my breaker bar in there to drop the rear. And remember, in my case, I still have this, uh, this stabilizer link in here. So we wanna be sure if we can get that out. Let me just get my bar in here. There we go. Free that up. Now that that's free, just do one last check. Make sure everything is off here. Obviously axle, lower ball joint, link, lower mount on the shock. And yeah, I mean, everything looks good. So I'm just gonna get my guy in here and basically wedge this out. There we go. Slide that to the side here. Ah, and that sucker is out. Taking a look at these two, they're, you know, the old one actually isn't that bad. There's no serious rust. There is a little bit of, you know, surface rust, but, and the ball joint was looking a little sad. You know, that needed to get redone. Obviously that's gonna get refreshed with a brand new one. But uh, all in all, you know, it makes, it makes for a good video and, and I get a nice, nice black shiny part out of it. So let's take this bad lad and slap it back in. So we're ready to reintroduce our lower control arm. And so I just have my bolts and of course the nuts here. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna rest this ball joint up in the general area, of course. And I'm gonna focus on getting the bolts in first. And once we have these bolts in, it's gonna allow us to kind of have everything held in place and then we can focus on getting the ball joint set in. Now, as you can see, there's little lips here and it'll hold the, um, hold the washer in place. So when we do get these bolts in and get this mounted, we want to cinch down the nuts just far enough to get this to sit inside the groove. We don't want it popping out of this with the bolt in there because it'll be a huge pain if we start connecting everything up front and it'll be a huge pain to get it to basically line up. So, and I of course clean this up a little bit as well. Ah, not that, not that it looks like it, but I did. And then ah, push this up here. Okay. All right, just kind of gently whacking it in here. Probably gonna need to grab my dead blow to kind of manipulate this, but let's see here. So I have this side close. And I'm wondering, let me take a look here. There we go. So that side's up. There we go. Let me roll it around the damn sand before I put it in here. <sighs> Genius move. All right, we are close, there we go. So that one's close. Let me grab this one. There we go. And I'm gonna have to tap the front of this to get it to realign back. So all I'm doing right now is just lining up the bolt holes with the holes in the frame and then sliding the bolts through. <laughs> All right, that's looking pretty darn good. You probably can't see that, but basically the hole in the control arm is lined up with the hole in the frame. So I'm just gonna grab my bolt, slide that through. Awesome. And then I'm gonna grab my washers on the opposite side, slide those in. And as you can see, they're not aligned at the moment. Ah. Looks like the one in the rear is, which is a nice treat. There we go. And this looks like this side of the arm needs to come forward. Close. All right. Looks like I got it. Woo. Excellent. Is it gonna line up on this side? Oh, it is. 
Very good. I'm gonna grab my impact and just very lightly just get these two, uh, again, just push the, push the washer so it stays aligned in here while I can go mess around on the front. So of course, I didn't tighten them down like crazy. They're just in there to hold it all in place. And now we can come up here and focus on our ball joint. I'm going to give this one more good clean and I'm actually gonna drop some grease in here into the, uh, into the hole that it drops into. It's just gonna make the install a little bit easier. And we're also gonna put our wedge back in. So we wanna make this hole as big as we can. So that way this guy just slides right in without issue. So first with our final wipe down, Next, we're gonna grab our grease and be uh, nice and liberal with it. And now what I'm gonna do is, I don't think I have any more space. I really don't. I was gonna try to lower this a little bit, but we got a little tiny bit of wiggle room. So I'm going to move this into place here and then push the ball joint and try to align it as much as I can. I'm gonna get something soft and just tap it with my dead blow hammer to just try to align it a little bit with the hole as much as we can. And that way when it slides in, it uh, goes in straight, doesn't get torqued and, and give us trouble. All right, from where I'm standing, looks like it needs to come this way a little bit. There we go, like that. Perfect. So just pulled it and dropped it into place. I'm gonna grab my wedge. Wedge this again. And now we wanna to try to manipulate this a little bit so it goes ah, into that hole. There we go. Hey, hey, all right. Looks like we have it some of the way lined up here. See if we can push down, get it to go in. All right, maybe we need to wedge this open a little bit more. There we go. See if we can get it to go down. Awesome. Look at that. Hello, beautiful. All right, now, remember when I was showing you uh, the other one was popped out and this one of course as well. There's a little groove in there and we gotta match that groove with this hole. So when we slide in our bolt, it not only will it actually slide in, but it sits inside of that groove. So I think what I'm gonna do to help me out a little bit is I'm actually gonna release the upper ball joint again and that's gonna allow me to articulate my arm here and sort of move it around. So let's do that. There we go. So now by moving this around, I can kind of get it in a better place to push down on it. There we go. I feel like that's doing it for us. There we are, perfect. So once it's to the point where you can get this wedge out, That'll sort of hold it in place. And let me show you in here what I mean. As you can see, the, the cutout in the ball joint is now aligned with this channel. So I'm gonna grab my new bolt and new nut and secure it, make sure, it's, make sure we don't lose our progress. Then at that point, we just gotta reconnect everything and, uh, and cinch it down to torque. Like I said earlier, I bought a new nut and bolt for this one. So just slide that guy through and get the nut on the other side. I'm just gonna grab my impact and just get it to the point where it's touching this. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cinch it down to spec yet. All right, the new one is the same. It has 17 on the bolt, 19 on the nut. There it goes. So now that it's touching, I'm gonna pull this off, there we go. We know that that's not coming out now. So while this is still drooped, get your uh, link back in here, because it was probably out like this. Get your sway bar link back in. And now we just need to take everything and, uh, and reassemble it. So I'm going to put a little bit of lift on this here. There we go. And that way I can get my uh, little supports here out. There we go, for the axle. Awesome. I'm gonna take off my upper ball joint one more time so that way we can get the axle in. But before I do that, I'm gonna make sure all this is clean because I had you know, sand and garbage flying around everywhere. Once I have this clean, I'm going to reapply 
my chassis grease that I had on here. There we go. That will help, of course, create a bunch of room to go get our axle back in. Don't remember how I got this in. Super annoying. Maybe it was like this. Yes, that's gotta be it. There we go. Woo! Now, slide that in, make sure that it lines up with the little splines in there. Very good. And get our upper link back in. There. Dang it. So I'm going to get this uh, jack supported again, or realigned, because it's about to fall off here. But while it's hanging at its lowest point, I'm gonna get this guy back into place. So I'm gonna go grab the bolt and nut for my lower shock, push that in, put our tie rod back in, put our sway bar link back in, and then we can cinch everything down. I tend to find this difficult, but uh, let's see if I can make this a little bit easier on myself. Just gotta push this down. There we go. Just kind of get something to rest against it. I don't know. I feel like you need three hands for this job, but if I just push this. Oh. oh. No way it was that easy. Wow. So I think my truck is trying to apologize to me for uh, being such a pain in the ass for the rest of this job because that, uh, that was the easiest I've ever uh, mounted that lower shock bolt. So I'm gonna grab the nut here. Again, just finger tightening it, getting it in there. Next up, grab your tie rod, push that in, and we'll get that nut secured down here. All right, next up, I'm going to put a little bit of upward pressure on this here. Push this up, and that way our sway bar link will align. You can actually see it falling into place right there. There we go. Awesome. Then we grab our nut for this. We want to get the, again, uh, I believe it's 19 if I remember correctly on the back here. Yep, 19 on the back, probably 17 on the front. And then again, I'm just going to grab my impact and get that guy on there. We'll torque that down in just a minute. On the front side here, we're going to clean off the threads on the axle. Grab, a, I got a new axle nut. Just going to grab that. And then again, just grab the impact until, uh, until it touches. There we go. All right, my friends, this is it. So all we need to do now is cinch everything down to the proper spec. And I'll put the specs on, uh, of course, the screen, and I'll also provide you a diagram with all of the specs for at least this particular Titan, and I'll put them on my website and a link and in the description. So once we have all this tightened down, we'll just want to, of course, throw the tire back on, drop it, and we're ready to rock. Now, in this particular case, I uh, am going to end up raising the front end by a couple inches. So it's important that when you start changing the geometry of your suspension that you go get it aligned. Now you'll notice when I went to go reinstall the bolts on the uh, lower control arm, I have the standard bolts, meaning they don't move backwards and forwards. They're not cam bolts. What I'm probably going to do is swap those out and then go get this aligned. But for now, I just need to get this damn thing out of my garage. One last and critical thing you need to do when you go to tighten the uh, mounting bolts for the lower control arm, from the lower control arm to the frame, you need to lift this up with your jack and push up on it to where it's in its neutral position. So basically you need to jack this up until the truck itself starts to move and that's gonna be its neutral position. The reason we're doing that is we're doing something called preloading your bushings and that means that you want your bushings to be cinched down when the, when the vehicle's in its neutral position. So if we were to tighten them down right now with the whole suspension drooped as low as it will go, that means that when we put the tire back on and we drop it to the ground, that the bushings will be under tension all the time. We definitely don't want that. So that's why we lift it up till it's in its neutral position, tighten everything down, set it down. And that way, when your car's just sitting there, there is no tension on the bushing. There's only tension when the suspension articulates down or of course up. That is going to be it from me. I'm actually very excited to finish this job because of course these videos don't really uh, articulate the passage of time, but uh, due to a bunch of different circumstances, 
this job has taken me multiple months. And so uh, this truck has just been sitting here in my garage up on jack stands for a long time and I'm very, very excited to get it finished. So uh, now that that's done, I'm going to move on to the brakes next. So while I was doing this job, uh, I knocked a brake line and the brake line is super, super fragile and rusted through. So when I hit it, it uh, started leaking. So yeehaw, we get to deal with fixing some brakes uh, before I can finally get this thing back on the road. But that means another video for you. If you did find that this video was helpful to you, please go ahead and hit the like button on this video. That will definitely help me out. And if you have a Titan, subscribe to this channel. Uh, this is just the beginning. I have uh, four, four videos sitting on my computer waiting to be edited and an infinite number more that I'm gonna be making on this truck. Don't forget to look down in the description where I'm gonna have a sort of companion article here with all of the torque specs in a diagram for you. And that's pretty much it. So see you guys in the next one.